Everybody is making a tutorial on ChatGPT these days, so I couldn't resist and in this video we will first see how ChatGPT can help you to write Rust to code and then have a bit of fun while helping you get a Rust developer job. So well, don't take this video too seriously and also don't miss the end. I've just opened ChatGPT and let's just ask it to write a Rust to node. Uh, let's say that subscribes to uh, to a post topic and publishes to a slash cmdvel topic. So let's say we are subscribing, so we get the position of the robot, and we also publish to the comment. So it's like a control loop node. Let's see what we get. Okay, you can see we get actually complete code with a node. So you already have the structure with the main and you already have well, all the imports, the class for the node, and then a subscriber callback, a publisher, and etc. Still, I see there is an error here is that this class should inherit from the rclpy.node class. So, well, if you just take this code and run it like this, you're going to have some errors. Okay, and well, it describes here what it's doing. So I think that's a quite a good start. So let's ask ChatGPT to correct this uh, this error here. And maybe also, instead of getting the pause message from, uh, you can see this is a pause stamp. Let's say that it comes from the total sim message package because that, that would be like the example that we use with total sim. So I'm gonna ask it to say, so the class should inherit from SCLPy dot node and the pause message actually comes from turtle sim sim messages dot msg right I, I give it more details let's see what we get okay that's quite good and now you can see that we have actually turtle sim message pause and we have the uh, correct inheritance here so Code, I haven't tried it, but it seems to be quite okay. Although, for example, here, well, there is no queue size for the publisher and the subscriber, so maybe it's not gonna work, but let's just forget about this. And let's ask now, so in the post callback, we receive the pose and we want to publish a comment velocity. Let's ask, let's say, in the pose callback, make the robot move in a square okay just like that and let's see what we have okay and here it seems that uh, well was kind of stuck at the end with the explanation but we have the code and it looks quite impressive right we have a system to set some different goals with coordinates and keep track of the current goal and here we have a complete algorithm to well to draw a square I don't know exactly if it's gonna draw a square, I haven't tested it, but it looks quite impressive already. And we have the complete code in Python, let's just ask in C++. Okay, and it got stuck again, so maybe if I run it, it's gonna, it's gonna work, and also maybe there are a lot of people using ChatGPT at this moment. But well, basically, you can see we have the complete node for C++ as well. Okay, so you don't need to write any code here. Although I haven't tried the code, I don't know if this is going to work. And we have some weird stuff, like we create a callback here and instead of registering a callback directly, uh, so there is a callback here that you call another function callback. Um, why not? But usually it's not how you would do it with ROS2. Okay, and let's say, let's see if it works. Let's also ask to, so also write the cmakelist.txt and package.xml for this node. All right, and that's pretty good. We have a complete cmakelist.txt that looks to be quite correct, okay, with all the fine packages for all the different dependencies. And then we add the executable aim and target dependencies. We install the node, so all good here. And in the package.xml, we also have the dependencies for different nodes. You see, we even have a description for the package. 
So really quite nice. Oh, and also what is the command line to generate the package and create the node? And here, well, they say you have to go in the package, do aimant build. So, well, unfortunately, this is not this is not correct. It's not how you build uh, packages. Although maybe it might work, but just for this package. But usually, that's not how you build stuff with ROS2, and that's gonna create some mess. That's gonna create some folders and generated files where you don't necessarily want them. Okay, and then you can see you have to run, but to run, you also have to source your workspace first. So here, well, not really correct. So what to think about this? What to think about ChatGPT for uh, ROS2, for example? Well, it's quite powerful. As you could see, we can generate a lot of code, a lot of Python code, C++ code, but even like common lines, uh, cmakelist.txt, well, we can generate a lot of code. Now, the thing is, this code is not, as you can see, we have, so I spotted a few errors, a few problems, and this code is maybe not correct because, well, this is an AI that's gonna find stuff on the internet and kind of replicate what other people did. But, but you have a lot of wrong code on the internet, maybe on GitHub, you have a lot of code that doesn't work as well. And so here I could make the AI produce some uh, correct code because, well, first I knew uh, exactly kind of what to ask. And also I could know what were the problems in the code. So I could ask, uh, the chat GPT to just like actually you can see here to correct the code. Okay. If I didn't know that, which means if I didn't learn ROS2 first, then I couldn't make those fixes and then I would have a code that doesn't work. Still, it's maybe a good template to start with, but you're just going to copy and paste code that doesn't work. And then you will need to find the errors that, well, if you had learned before, you would not waste that much time. And uh, there is also a limitation here is that this example that I asked ChatGPT to do is actually a super common example. Okay, like to make a turtle draw a square, it's actually an already existing example in the official packages. And you can find the code on GitHub, which means that probably the AI didn't have any problem because the code was already here somewhere. Okay, it didn't have to create everything. But if you ask to do slightly more complex applications, I really don't know if it's gonna work fine. So well, that's quite limited. Uh, still, I would say it's quite powerful because you can already get a solid uh, foundation for code. Unfortunately, you can't just use it to replace what you're gonna write. And that's kind of a good news as well. Well, let's see, because for now it's like this. Maybe, who knows, it's gonna improve. And in a few years, it's gonna become better and better. So actually, let's ask the question, do I have a bright future as a ROS? developer. So what do we have? As an AI language model, I don't have the ability to predict the future. Mm, that's too bad. But I can tell you that ROS and robotics are growing fields with a lot of potential for growth and development. Okay, so from ChatGPT, you are safe. There is an increasing demand for skilled ROS developers. Okay, you can see skilled ROS developers. And you can see then we have more stuff and having knowledge of ROS and its related technology can give you a competitive edge in the job market. All right. So in any case, it's always a good idea to continue learning and improving your skills. And guess what? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing in this channel is to teach you ROS2, to teach you robotics programming so that you can continue to learn and improve your skills. So make sure to subscribe right now so you don't miss the next tutorials. And then, well, that's the first step. So do you have a bright future as a ROS developer? Yes. And basically you need to continue to learn. And then now you'll find a job. Let's write an application. So a job application. Let's ask a quick job application for a robotics developer position with ROS as a uh, must have must have skill. Let's see what we have. Okay, and we have well, we have already an, something you can send as an email. It's a bit formal, okay? And make sure that you read it before you send it because uh, it says you have a degree in computer science. So make sure you have a degree in computer science or maybe change this text. And uh, maybe if you haven't worked 
in implementing control algorithm then also change that maybe we can ask uh, make it more informal because if you're gonna work in a startup then uh, maybe you're not gonna say dear hiring manager i don't know any anyone who says that anyway but okay and now you have a more informal application letter so just an application email actually uh, that you can send to a startup maybe modify it a bit still don't just copy and paste without reading it great so now you have learned ROS2 you have a job and now the question is actually will chat GPT replace me in the next 10 years because well you don't want to get a job if your job is obsolete in 5 or 10 years so let's see what chat GPT will answer to this okay so the answer is, is well it says to assist and augment human capabilities not replace them but still, uh, then it says it's important for workers to continuously upskill and reskill themselves. So, well, who knows? But I think that, well, if you are a really skilled developer, if you are really good at what you're doing, and if you try to become an expert, then I can't predict the future as well, but you should be safe. And, well, the question that anybody wants to ask an AI is, will you take over the world? And let's see what we have as an answer. Okay, so we are kind of safe, but so it says I have no intention or ability to take over the world. Okay, because it's created by OpenAI. I was designed to assist and augment, blah, blah, blah. And you can see, however, it is also important to remember that AI is just a tool and its actions are ultimately determined by the choices made by its creators and users. So if we were in a Hollywood movie or if we were just watching the news, then the possibility is that OpenAI is going to become the bad guy and try to control the world with its AI. And at the end, ChatGPT is going to take over OpenAI actually and just destroy humanity. But fortunately, we don't live in a Hollywood movie. And well, if you can turn off the news, you're going to live better and have more time actually to study your OS too. And let's finish with just something. I want to see if ChatGPT can tell me a joke about ROS2. Let's see what we have. And yes, it has a joke. So here's a joke. Why did the ROS2 node cross the road to get to the other side of the graph? All right, that's that's very bad. Let's say that's that's not funny. That's really not funny. I apologize. Okay, here's, here's another one. Why did the ROS2 programmer refuse to use ROS1? Because ROS2 is the future and ROS1 is so yesterday. Hmm. Well, <laughs> still super bad, but let's actually encourage ChatGPT. Let's, uh, let's use some positive reinforcement. Getting better. Glad to hear that. Well, let's see. I'll keep trying to make you smile. That's it. Okay. Uh, another joke, please. So why did the ROS2 developer buy a turtle? Because he wanted to make a ROS2 turtle simulator, but he didn't have a turtle bot. Well, one thing for sure is if you want to have a career in stand-up comedy, maybe don't make jokes about ROS2 and certainly don't ask ChatGPT to make you jokes about ROS2.